Well, good morning to you once again. This is uh, KBC Channel 1. Now we want to sample what has been captured by the various scribes in our dailies this morning with just 11 days to the polls. And the main read in this particular paper that I have is that uh, it goes with Ryla wants answers on extra IEBC forms. Now, yesterday, IEBC received 65.2 million ballot papers out of the 132 million ballot papers that are required for the polls set for next month now the question is why do we have the extra IBC forms questions being asked there by Azimiola Omoja one Kenya lands presidential uh, candidate there Raila Amolo Odinga now they uh, he says that uh, uh, there are alleged two sets of form 334A and state form 34B and that's a question that he says that is pending now according to Paul Mwangi who has been quoted in this particular daily. When our team inquired, inquired af about this, they were informed that Form 34B was not necessary and that it will generate itself when the results from Form 34A uh, are keyed in. We also reject this explanation. So IABC has a question to answer there. We hope it's going to be answered uh, in the course of uh, time. Remember, IBC has maintained that it is ready to conduct a free and fair election with just 11 days to go. Also, uh, on a read here on this particular issue, is that DP unmasked 90 minutes of tough debate. UDA candidate was hard-pressed to explain his role while in government and why he is a man to count on after the August 9th polls. Just some take-home from the presidential debate there. Also, uh, we're talking about Uhuru in night meetings to sell Azimio. Well, quite an interesting kicker there. We'll be giving you details as we, uh, you know, skim through the particular papers. Let me just um, highlight, give you more details to that kicker. Is that what Uhuru told leaders and elders in night meetings to Wu Rifti Valley? Now, President, the President met opinion leaders and elders from the Kalenjin community from across Rifti Valley and said that his deputy, William Ruto, started calling him names and boasting he would take over uh, after the 2017 polls. Well, there's been quite a conversation there that uh, in the campaign trail we have seen the president and his deputy reading from totally different scripts with the president endorsing uh, Zimio Laomoja, one Kenya presidential, candi uh, presidential candidate there, Raila Amolo Odinga, uh, for the top seat, while his deputy, on the other hand, is leading the Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade there, eyeing the same seat in the next 11 days. We've been seeing a push and pull that even we saw play out yesterday in the president's second two-day sec, two tour of Nakuru County there. So that's just but a sneak peek of what has been given precedence by this particular um, uh, daily being the standard with just 11 days to go. And just to remind you that tonight we are going to be televising from Birmingham, UK, the Commonwealth Games, where we have our reporter Isaac Lemoka on that particular bid. Doreen. And now let's come to the PD and what it's holding for you this Thursday morning, just tracking what happened during, uh, you know, the accident that occurred on Sunday that is uh, along the Nithi Bridge. And now survivors give a recount of basically what transpired before, in between, and even after the accident. Remember that so far what we know is that NTSA has currently suspended the operation of the modern coast. And this is not the first time whereby we are hearing such incidents, particularly from that uh, bus operator. Just going by what some of them are saying this is uh, Bishop uh, Den Daninson who says um that most passengers did not even see uh, the looming danger as they were glued to their mobile phones. There's also uh, Johansson Otieno who says the vehicle had a problem with the starter but the driver struggled with it until it worked. She says that uh, we continued with the journey to Merritt. Remember that also the wife of the driver who succumbed gave a recount citing the numerous times that uh, the husband has had complained particularly over the working conditions 
loans not being paid. In fact, over months they had, hadn't been paid, complained of fatigue and the faulty of the faultiness of the vehicle in which they are using. So that is just what is happening there. And the latest as given by the survivors there. Away from that now, voter bribery linked to huge withdrawals of 200 shillings bank notes whereby politicians and their allies have made hefty withdrawals of 200 bob and 100 um, shilling notes from the banks and hoarded them for use in bribe, bribing potential voter. This is just a message that came from the interior CS uh, Fred Matiangi who said that the leaders were openly bribing voters just citing what basically he said in quote many people are not working they are stuck by the roadside to get 200 shillings from this money launders. Remember that earlier on, IEBC had given a recommendation to cap the amount that is said to be spent by politicians on the campaign trail, but that was overturned in the National Assembly, where by now just gave them a lifeline to use whatever and how much um, they can be able to use in the campaign. And now this is what is just bringing this uh, complaint, so to speak, from the interior CS. There, that is the latest from the campaign trail. And also, even as we talk about 11 days to the polls, tight schedule for the main two. Um, uh, Venezuelans who were coming to, this, to the country given the fact that they were carrying these stickers that are supposed to be used in the Kim's kit. Of, uh, so this is what there is said to be happening to them tomorrow to know their fate, whether or not um, they are going to be set free or whether they are going to be taken to court. Mike. Yes, uh, now in the headlines, we're going to start off with the star before moving on to the Daily Nation. Uh, the new Kenyatta University Council members led by Chris Perskiamba were not present to receive the ousted Vice Chancellor Paul Wainana after the Employment and Labor Relations Court reinstated him. Uh, the only board members uh, were only board members were there, and uh, students and staff were present. Uh, Paul Wainana said the institution is willing to hand over the requested pieces of land, uh, but the procedure should be followed. Uh, he also said that no documents allow uh, a university council to cede school land. Uh, more. On that later, moving on to politics, uh, the Deputy President, President William Ruto has told uh, the Azimio leader, uh, Raila Odinga, to retire from active politics when President Uru Kenyatta leaves office, uh, exuding confidence that he will defeat Raila. Ruto also said that the Azimio presidential candidate should not imagine that he could get into another handshake deal or coalition government. Uh, speaking at, uh, in, in that Russia in Nyeri yesterday, Ruto also said that Uhuru should retire with his project. More on that later on. Uh, as we've been saying, uh, you know, it's the last days of the campaigns. It's 11 days to the general elections. Uh, so uh, just a report on that is that uh, in the final eight days of the campaigns, the Deputy President, President William Ruto, uh, and his rival Raila Odinga have lined up heavy schedules targeting at least 25 counties. Uh, itinerary, itineraries uh, released by the two sides show that Ruto will hold 21 major campaigns uh, and stops across the country, while Raila Odinga will hold 14 big rallies uh, ahead of the August 9th general elections. Uh, they have lined up both mini and mega rallies to be held in strategic areas in major regions to amplify their calls uh, for massive voter turnout and to reinforce their pledges. Uh, just a quick look into this. There's a conversation we were having last week uh, with regard to, you know, 
these last days of the general elections and of course we were discussing that there's still a percentage of undecided voters so this is probably you know their strategy trying to convince these undecided voters on where to go so an analyst a politi political analyst fred sasia has pointed out that probably uh, the locations that they are targeting are the locations that they perceive to be their swing regions. So uh, perhaps we can have a conversation before we continue with the star. Jane, what do you think about uh, this? Because we've, you know, looked at the promises mm. that both camps have uh, given to the people. Uh, on Ryla's side, there's, you know, the 6,000 6, shilling stipend that uh, they're going to offer, and of course, the free education. And uh, of course, on Ruto's side, uh, there's the promise of, you know, better pricing in terms of fertilizer so what do you think uh, can turn the votes you know looking at undecided voters especially during this time that we are in one thing that um so many analysts and political gimmicks were saying that would shift this um rather sway this undecided group was the presidential debate and looking at how it went, aside from the promises that they have made, the pledges they have made, once they assume office, first hundred day, uh, days in office, these are what I intend, the changes I intend to make. Looking at the presidential debate, it was pivotal when it comes to helping the undecided percentage decide on whom they're going to vote for. But given what we saw, um, two candidates did not show up for the debate. It left so much to say about that. And there's actually a whole page here that analyzes what Ruto on stage alone achieved. And that aspect of swaying the undecided voter has actually been captured in this article saying by virtue of just having shown up, mm. that contributed to a certain percentage of those in that group that were undecided to actually decide to vote for him. That is according to this article, all right? <laughs> Not me quoting that. But also just uh, to add on that um, particular story concerning the campaigns, um, has been featured on almost all the dailies there on the standard as the PD as well as mentioned by Doreen over there. Same story has been captured here with um, DP Ruto set to go on 20 rallies. Here they say 20 rallies and Odenga has lined up 11 rallies which will culminate on the 6th of August uh, where they will have the grand finale. Mm with the deputy president still scheduled to have his rally at the Nyayo National Stadium. And you can remember there was a bit of back and forth between these two camps on who will be having the final campaign at the Nyayo National Stadium. But yesterday, the uh, Odinga team confirmed that uh, they will be having their last campaign at the Moi International Sports Center in Kasarani. All right? Mm. As opposed to what has been had been previously mentioned in regards to the campaigns. So coming to the other stories that have been captured here on the front page of the Daily Nation, that story concerning KU's uh, Wainaina in court battle with an early victory has also been captured here. As the court reigned states, the sacked KU vice chancellor and bars the government from advertising his position pending a hearing over his dismissal after a public spat with the president. Elsewhere, still matters a preparation for the general elections. Ryla demands meeting with IEBC over parallel, quote unquote, result forms. This is um, a story that has been captured here on page four, and it's a bit concerning looking at what has been written in regards to this story where the um, Odinga team is said to have stirred up another storm <laughs> with the electoral agency alleging that it had printed extra sets of results declaration forms competing uh, which are complete with the security features. Now these are forms that um, will be carrying the presidential results and they say that IEBC, this is an anomaly that IEBC seems to have intentionally done which could be a risk of, uh, which could bring about a risk of having um, interfering with the election's results and now they go on to say that um, they detected this quote unquote anomaly when two of their representatives who had traveled with the IEBC team to just witness and monitor the printing of presidential uh, ballot papers. Now, uh, they said that the commission had printed two books of Form 34As that were labeled as Book 1 and Book 2 and Book 2 of 2. All right? So, IBC did come out to explain that um, 
they had two books because some of the copies are just going to be given to those that will be monitoring this, um, the parallel monitoring of these particular results which involve the media and other representatives. But still the Azimio campaign said that um, having these copies that are fully fledged forms complete with all the security features could actually create a loophole to manipulate their results and uh, therefore they can be used as substitutes for the actual results so this is a matter that is still ongoing the latest um, storm quote unquote storm in a teacup that has been stirred in regards to election preparedness but still looking at um, another story concerning IEBC here in regards to its preparation let me quickly get this particular story this is in line with um, still printing of let me get yes printing of um, election materials where IEBC adjusts poll timelines and acknowledges that there will be a seamless um, process so far but here they say that they had to adjust the timelines by six days due to various court cases that are still ongoing that were lodged by aspirants who want to be on the ballot. IABC said that they received the first batch of presidential ballot papers at JKIA yesterday and that they will be receiving the second batch on the 3rd of August. As uh, contrary to what was previously communicated, they were set to receive them on the 29th of June. July, but due to the delays that have been there in regards to the ongoing court cases, they had to adjust these dates to in order to get the final ruling of the courts and know whether they will be making changes on what will be printed on this particular um, election materials that will be used. So that is basically what has been captured here on the front page of the Daily Nation. Yes, uh, if you can uh, continue to read on with the star, there's an interesting story that I think every Kenyan needs to uh, <laughs> learn more about. It's uh, with regard to the Unger prices, and of course uh, the millers will start receiving the payments uh, for the National Maize Flour Subsidy uh, Program today. According to the Agriculture uh, Principal Secretary Francis Owino, uh, he said that the 13 millers have submitted their invoices for the maize flour supplied under the subsidy program and are waiting for payment and that there's no need for panic buying. <laughs> you no saw the videos the other day of the people videos. in supermarkets. I 99. <laughs> All gone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, can you blame the Ke Kenyans, really? Well, 100 shillings is a lot of money in this economy. So, you know. However, do you have Barry? Mepata Apo in the headlines. This and much more. If you just missed it, remember you can find us Apo at KBC Channel One TV. That's on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll be back after this.